So welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're doing a painting tutorial for World War II Sherman tanks. These are from the Plastic Soldier Company. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. So I started off with a black spray paint base coat and then did a bit of a centerfold highlight over the top using a grey. So the brown I'm using is chocolate brown and I'm literally trying to, trying to do these tanks for speed. So um, started off with just dry brushing dry brushing all over the uh, the vehicle just to give it a bit of coloration really more than anything which we can then build the green layers on later I've seen a lot of videos and the tanks come out as pieces of art they look great but they take a long time um, even after the editing the videos are still sort of 25 30 minutes sometimes even an hour and I just kind of feel I don't have time for that when I'm painting I want to be able to do it quick and easy so for this video I'm literally going to be doing 90% of the painting with dry brushing um, and that's it and then just picking out a few of the fine details later on just that way you can get a quick and easy battle group painted up and on the table without having to spend your whole life doing it so as you can see I'm using a makeup application brush I'm not actually saw, uh, sure what it was I literally found it in my uh, ex's bits and pieces that she'd left and off we went I do enjoy dry brushing just because you can it picks out all of the the details and it's I don't know I'm not sure why I just find it very very relaxing and enjoyable I uh, started doing the same for the turret. Uh, so at this point I realised I hadn't actually glued on the barrel and at one point it will drop off and then it needs to be glued, uh, glued on later on. But again, just picking it all out, going over the whole thing, giving it a sort of nice brown base coat. Next up we go for the Russian green again. But again, just dry brushing, putting a little bit more emphasis when it comes to the tracks onto the um, the metal, which is down there, which would be green. Um, I can't remember what their names are. There is a specific name. Avoiding the tracks where possible. Then on the body itself, I put I went a bit heavier on the flat areas on the sides. Um, and was a bit lighter on the more recessed areas just so you get that sort of natural variation between the brown well I guess you'd say the black then the brown and then the green but same process as before just dry brush over um, I think I went over it about twice each part just to make sure that I did have a good covering and <clears throat> yeah make sure you catch all the, the different areas that you need as I was just doing it for uh, speed, the base, like the underside of the vehicle, I didn't worry about. Um, I'm never going to look under there. I don't really expect anyone else to, so why waste your time on it? And then you repeat the same process onto the turret. Nice and easy. So I am enjoying... Uh, currently moving into a bit of World War Two. Don't think that I've forgotten the American Civil War. I will be doing some sharpshooters for the Union. Uh, was it the first first sharpshooter regiment in the green uniforms? Um, and I've got a few more um, units for the Confederates to paint up shortly as well, so they will be coming back. If there's any specific regiments from any period that you would like to see done, let me know, and I can I can do those. So. I left it just a couple of seconds to dry, but again with dry brushing it's nice and easy. And now I added a bit of yellow green to the Russian green just to pick out the highlights now. So same again with dry brushing, but now we're just going more for the, the angles, the edges, the pieces that we want to pick out because we've now already got the, the base coat green. And at this stage you really start to get the uh, get the effect that you're going for, that we're going for so 
So I've started with the Hurtgen Forest as the first battle report we did and had a Sherman tank come on there. I'm going to do a couple more battles around that area whilst I paint up the armour and then we'll be having a few good larger armoured battles um, sort of heading towards probably doing a sort of Normandy campaign and the days afterwards and sort of culminating in a sort of Falaise pocket battle where historically as we as we know the German forces were more or less annihilated although some did escape. So the next step here was to add a bit of dust and grime so khaki it was I believe the colour and again dry brush around the tracks, dry brush around the hull uh, anywhere that dirt and dust would get to just dry brush it in. I also did a little bit of stippling, I just put a little bit of extra paint on the brush, not a huge amount but just a little bit and then I could do a few little specks and things up the side of the vehicle just there but again I wasn't going excessive this is for tabletop it's not uh, a display piece I want my vehicles to look good from uh, sort of three or four feet uh, but they don't need to be anything more than that although if anyone would like me to do um, in-depth videos on making master class then I can try and do that for you um, but for the most part my videos are more for practical wargaming rather than masterclass painting. I guess at this stage you could actually have re-highlighted, um, dry brush sorry, the entire vehicle with the uh, sort of dusty khaki colour just because dust does fall everywhere. Um, but I didn't see the need. So here I just went back over the tracks with the uh, dark brown and black mix just to get those ready in any areas that uh, needed sort of picking out. But it's amazing when you're painting the sort of rabbit hole that you can go down you start painting and then you're like oh i can just do that piece and i can just do this piece and then very soon you're doing every single piece and it looks great but uh, your quick uh, painting tutorial could end up being a monster so uh, yeah i've always got to control myself um, after I'd finished doing the, the tracks, it was then a matter of getting some black paint and just going over any of the more intricate pieces, the, gun, uh, the machine gun barrels, um, any of the tools on the back of the vehicle that were later on going to pick out with uh, the, sort of the gun metal or high, uh, pick out with the light browns if they're wooden shafts for the sledgehammers, etc. I was quite lucky that it was a reasonably dry day, so it only took a few a few seconds really for most of the uh, paint to dry each layer. Anyway, at this stage, we are picking out the wooden handles with a light brown and all of the metal work with, uh, I use a silver mixed with black, so it kind of makes it into more of like an oily, oily silvery black color. But I always find it works quite nicely. So in my, uh, my collection of still to paint, um, and build for that matter, I've got some German Panthers, I've got Tigers, um, what else do I have? Some Stugs, I've got a Panzer IV, uh, Panzer 38T, a couple of half tracks, um, and a couple of Scout vehicles. 
along with Faustrum Jaeger and just regular infantry, so there's quite a few things to paint. Uh, for the British and Americans, I've got more Shermans, uh, I've got some Churchills, um, some Cromwell tanks. What else do I have? We've got half tracks, universal carriers, also known as Bren carriers and some Willis Jeeps. So we've got quite a collection of bits and pieces to paint up over the next few weeks to months. So if there's anything in particular order you want me to do, uh, let me know and I will get those done first. Anyway, now what I did is I got a bit of that silver again and just went back over the tracks. For the most part, vehicles, their tracks go rusty um, rather than silvery, but I was just kind of thinking I want it to stand out a little bit more. Perhaps they've driven through a stone wall or something of that nature and it's just scuffed the metal back to uh, the bare metal underneath. So I just picked out a few areas in the silver. And in the end, pretty quick project. Um, I think it only took about 15 minutes to do the tank, um, if that. I think it was slightly less, about 12 to 15 minutes anyway. And they're perfectly usable and battle ready. So nice and easy tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.